God's honest truth. I watched more of the drive chip and pod championship Jesus. with the kids than I did the Valero Texas Open. And I got excited. Those kids had some passion. They had some fire. I mean, fuck, you got 10, 11 year olds sitting as far as us. I, you know, Jeff, this is the worst they're thing they're that these the kids should be involved in. I, I, this is another event. This is another event where we're exploiting the children. It's there at Augusta National. You can see the parents like absolutely pissed when these kids were leaving, you know, 18 foot putts short. I mean, kids who just pull hooking it into out of bounds. I mean, you got caddies running down the, you know, down the fairway. And I couldn't even, I, I tuned into it and I'm trying to watch this stupid event. And I realize that the damn thing is like, I don't know what the hell is going on. We got, we got Charlie chipping. We got, we got Jimmy, you know, hitting, hitting fucking drivers. We got Sally putting uh, at some point in time. Like this is just exploitation and it's great. Like if you want to film it, put it on your own damn YouTube channel, but I just felt for for like a little bit. This was like the little league all star whatever thing they have on ESPN the Ocho, right? The world, yeah, yeah. It's like the little league world series. But I'll, t- I'll tell you what caught my attention. What got me going? You know your boy, the caveman, Bryson's buddy, Kyle Berkshire, the long drive guy. He's yeah. got his little stupid rock where he where he rocks back and forth before he hits it. One of the kids was doing that when I first clicked on, and I'm like, that's like this is like this this era's Happy Gilmore move right to do this i might fucking pull that out the local muni who knows but i'm not joking i watched more of that than i did the texas open just it's facts well uh, jeff i I just need to know who won who won this week at the uh the drive chip and putt at augusta a a lot of uh youngsters won um you know i i I, I, nobody that i know nobody from uh california that i that i could remember uh, they don't look like they came from um, the united states quite honestly like there was a lot of you know a lot of i don't want to be mean you asked me some well that's the thing you ask tough questions sometimes you're not going to get the answer that you want Uh, this is live or you know somewhat live tv sometimes i can watch my mouth (laughs) it was one of those things yes I mean, did we take away anything? Did we learn anything? The only thing I learned was Bubba Watson loves watching these children. You know, I don't know if he's uh, piddling his ice cream, uh, you know, out at the uh, Augusta National. Dr. Connelisa Rice was out there congratulating kids. And all I got to see was kids crying. It was either they were winning crying or was losing crying. I just want to know, like, what was the, what was the, like, how many spankings were given that night when those kids failed? Like, I just, <laughs> like, at some point in time, like, God, like, should we really be highlighting these things on a Sunday when we should be watching, like, a legit major championship? Instead, we've got five hours of the drive, chip, and putt. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if Gus National wants to invite my son and I, and we go, you know, experience some of these things. Absolutely. I want some of the drama. Okay. I want some of the, uh, you know, some of the abusive parents, you know, berating these kids on TV. I want some of that. I want some of that action. I want some of the kids talking shit to other kids. I want kids crying because, you know, there's some, uh, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, some banter, maybe some wages lost, you know, out there. I mean, we, we didn't even get Vegas odds this week. So to wrap up the drive, chip and putt, J- Jeff, I'm, I'm happy you watched it. I, I'm I'm happy for you. Probably, I personally, you're probably happy I brought it up. You, you I, I'm super happy. It. I know it, that. <laughs> I, I didn't prepare to talk about it, uh, which is which is totally fine. But let's let's get to the Augusta National Women's Amateur event, Jeff. I gotta ask you when we kind of highlighted, we didn't even really highlight it last week. We just kind of lightly talked about it. But it was one of those things that you you think back and you realize like Augusta Women's, you know, whatever championship or amateur thing. Did you know that they were only going to play one round at Augusta? Oh, yeah. I, I knew the first two rounds were off-site at a different course. I think it's a Jack Nicholas course, too, that they played. I had no clue. Uh, which makes it uh, – oh, yeah. It, you, they're not going to let them play three days in a row. Are you kidding me? That's three days worth of divots they'd have to fill in. Well, maybe not divots, but, you know, grass they'd have to fix. Here's the thing. I enjoyed watching that. Not, I mean, the golf was good. It went to a playoff. You know, a young girl won. And, uh, good for her. But – I was just peeking at the course. I wanted to see what it looked like. And, and I mean, maybe they're going to put some more water on it for the guys this week, but it looked like it was a little dry, a lot drier than it was for the, uh, the November masters. 
Well, yeah, it, there there was not a lot of moisture out there in, uh, in Augusta National. It was one of those things that I tuned in to watch this thing, and I fit like as I'm watching, I'm like, God, like these girls are rather timid. Like it's, I know it's like you know, it's the Masters, right? It's Augusta National, it's the you know one of the biggest stages in golf. But I looked at it, and I'm like, God, it looks like no one wants to go out and win this thing. And then I was listening to uh, you know some some other whatever news media, and they were telling me that. Pretty much the day before that these girls had actually played in a practice round, it was blowing 25 miles an hour, and the greens were just super fast and hard, and they were absolutely terrified, absolutely terrified of of hitting the anything, and it was just not reachable. It was one of the hardest golf courses they'd ever played, and I looked at the playoff, and it was it was kind of cool. Like it was cool to see the event. Uh, I didn't watch the first two days because well it. I, I tuned in thinking I was going to see hole 16 at Augusta. Instead, I saw hole 16 in what looked like the golf course in my fucking backyard. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, this is it, the name says Augusta. We're we, we're not, we're in Evans, Georgia. We're not even near Augusta. Yeah, it was a little false advertising, but you know what? It got the juices flowing. It, it gets you ready for Masters week. Um, it's cool for the girls to get out there and play and get a chance to play at Augusta like that. You know, and then you had the women's. You know the LPGA had a major going on as well, so it it was well, women's golf week. It was they, yeah. they didn't exploit it like they should have, but it was it yeah. So we gotta we gotta congratulate to Sabasa oh, Kajitani. I, I can't wait for this one. I can't wait for this one. Do it again. Yeah, it's to to Sabasa Kaj Kajitani defeats Emily Miga. I can't even, I can't even pronounce the American one. Miga Miga look. Miguelikio, Emily. So Sabasa and defeats Emily in a one in one hole playoff. You know, loses unfortunately in a playoff. the The Japanese girl was rather rather excited. I mean, just absolutely freaking out, uh, which was cool to see. She played some great golf to get her you know into that actual event. Which uh, you know, congratulations. the The only thing I gotta ask you, Jeff, is like at some point in time, why did they why did they host this event? the same week as the ladies first major championship like what could they have chose like maybe maybe in the fall somewhere that's not going to be the same time where some of these other ladies could actually play in that first major championship like do you think maybe you'd want to split this up augusta national shuts down for two weeks and that's all their members are going to allow they shut down for this this week to get the course prep and and the little women's tournament and the masters and the rest of the time it's theirs so that, that's why I don't think they want to separate it. I don't think they want to have another month where they got to give up their tea times. So I think they just bunch it into one, get the course ready once for this tournament, and then forget about it. It's it's their little palace after. Yeah, that. it's they're, they're going to knock out all the good deeds. Okay, they're going to host, you know, some, you know, foreign <laughs> ladies, you know, one day. Uh, they're going to knock out the kids thing, you know, one day. And they're, they're going to host the Masters for the rest of the players. And uh, and let their uh, you know let their members enjoy the rest of the activities, which I get. I mean, if if I'm a member at Augusta, first of all, okay, wh- what are we doing here? Okay, wh- can we kick the kids off to maybe that other Evans golf course, or maybe like the Muni down the street? Maybe get, have them walk across the the golf course or something. It's just I don't know. It, I I thought it was really good. I just at the same time, it's uh you realize that women's golf it's progressive. I think. Other than that, let's get into the uh, the ANA, right? It's this major championship out at uh, Carlsbad, uh, California. I thought it was a good event. I thought it was uh, it was absolutely entertaining, and I thought it was uh, you know to see Patty uh, Tava Tanakit, uh, you know, beat Lydia Ko. Uh, I thought it was really compelling. It was a good event, and you know, it was a hundred degrees out there. It was warm. Some of the girls, I mean, specifically one, was hitting it a long ways compared to everybody else. Uh, it was fun to watch. I like that they got rid of the blue wall behind 18. So, you know, it put a little pressure on them. I think I think it caused a lot of people to lay up, though, which took some of the excitement out of going for 18 and 2 because when they had the wall, they didn't care. This year, I, you saw a lot of them lay up because um, they were they were scared because you couldn't fly it over the green this year. Uh, but, uh, hey, all in all, it was a good tournament. The only sad thing is we say it every week is I'm watching it on reruns you know, at seven o'clock at night, it was set up to be pretty exciting. And with Patty, I mean, on Sunday, it was had a five shot lead. Like it's, I don't want to say that lacks some of the, you know, excitement, but it was, 
I looked at her and then I started getting into her stats and realized like, oh my God, this lady is a freaking bomber. She averaged 323 yards off the tee. Like that's crazy. She hit 37 of 56 fairways in regu- in yeah, fairways hit. I haven't hit 37 fairways this year. Like, and let alone hit it 323 yards. Like that's incredible. Yeah, I was shocked when I watched her. I think I watched her on Friday. Maybe it was Saturday. Um, but she was playing with your girl Mel Reed. You know, uh, we did her hot or not, but flat bill. Uh, and consistently, consistently out driving her by 70 yards. And I'm like, this girl's out of control. And I never even heard of her. Never heard of her till this week. Well, and she looked like a complete killer. Like she, I mean, she's got the glasses. Her freaking collar popped up. She's she's wearing long sleeve shirts. And, you know, in the middle of Southern California, it just, it was one of those things that you look at her and go, I don't know. I don't know if I'd mess with this chick. 21 years old. I mean, this is her, technically her second season on the LPJ tour. It's her rookie season with the whole COVID nonsense. She's, she's won a bunch of amateur championships. She's, you know, apparently one of those, one of those girls from Thailand who literally just absolutely murders the ball and. I, I really can't. I mean, she was she was entertaining, to be quite honest with you. It was it was fun to watch. Um, but what really made Sunday a little bit more entertaining was Lydia Ko. I mean, former world number one, has won this event before, has copped up leads before. She was chasing her down at at one point. I mean, she was 10 under. 10 under. She shot 62 and could not get it done. It was just it was pretty cool to at least see some of that action, you know, coming down the stretch. Yeah, no, it was, and she's she's great. I hope she she makes a little comeback. The one thing that I took from the the early rounds though was Michelle Wee, right? Her second tournament back, and everybody wants her to be successful. She goes out and shoots two under on day one, and everybody's thinking like, okay, she figured it out, and then she backs it up with with a good old like seventy nine, and just doesn't even come close to making the cut, and is gone again. It was it was really disappointing. I mean, it you know you get excited about Michelle what Michelle Wee West. It's you know it's. It's one of those golfers, at least I, as growing up, it was one of those female golfers that was relatable for not relatable, but like you knew who she was. And it was it was one of those things that's God, the game is not very good. I mean, played well for day one and then all of a sudden got completely rejected. Um, so I, I thought it was a cool event. Good, good venue, um, you know, as 50 years at the ANA uh, looks like a fun golf course to play for the most part. Pete Dye design the pawn jump. I, I We've touched on this before, but. The, what's up with, what's up with them jumping in the lake is that is that cool is it something that's uh, i think it's all right right i think it's all right i mean you, you know you had your takes last year with the uh, the wet t-shirt content that um you know jumping into the into the ponds but here's the thing the the reason that patty and i'm not even going to try her last name um is now like number one in my book uh, above bryce and dishan because how she celebrated are you kidding me? She wasn't drinking chocolate milk and having a, a fucking pizza pocket. She was chugging, <laughs> chugging champagne. She oh, gave yeah. zero fuck. The girl is a killer. I'm telling you. I mean, she's got the sunglasses. She's chugging champagne. I mean, it is absolutely, I mean, going apes it. She, she does the proper cannonball after she wins a major championship, Jeff. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. It's one of those things that you look back last year and you're like, God, she... But they had to like push her into the fucking pond. At least she, you know, she'd seen the venue before. She she had won there before at, at one of the local amateur events. And it just it's it's exciting. And it's exciting for women's golf. It's exciting to see what her career is gonna look like here in the next five years. She might go out there and win, I don't know, a handful of majors and absolutely destroy these girls. They're gonna start they're gonna start chugging protein like Bryson does. It's just it's gonna be fun to watch uh, as these things unfold. Hey, I want her in our group. I, I want to play around with her. I, I, she's in. The only thing is, she's gonna have to play the tips, and we'll go up to the men's tees because that, that's about the only way to make it fair. <laughs> it's the only way. It it absolutely would be. And I mean, uh, she might. I mean, we're we don't have a scheduled hot or not, but she might make a hot or not segment here in the next few weeks. 